What is up, my friends? We got a juicy episode. We're starting off with Robinhood's sexy new desktop application, Google's new search and ad executives, and we have some chunky news over at Meta. Um, it's layoff, so it's not that it's not that exciting. And after a raving review of Megalopolis, we talk about the Tesla robot taxi and the Uber potential acquisition of Expedia to become a super app of travel. It's Ricker. It's Bon. It's time to listen to the pod. <laughs> what an intro that was, am I right? Damn, that was a great intro. Uh, that was probably the best intro yet. That was a good one. been on this Zoom call for 14 minutes. It's called oh, pre-production meeting, nerds. I'm sorry. Yeah. I lash out at other people and call them nerds just because I wear glasses. Does the 14 minutes cut into the recording time? That I'm we... not sh positive. And I think... The already yes. very limited recording time? I think yes. I mean, it's still a pretty nice free service. Maybe they should just like make ads pop up in the middle of your conversation. <laughs> Instead of like limiting our meetings. Oh my goodness. Just freaking. Yeah. Uh, dude, okay. So this is actually, you know, at the beginning, it's Ricker, it's Bond, everybody's favorite podcast. At the beginning, wow. for the <laughs> oh, hey, dude. first 20 minutes, we obviously talk about the weekend. We obviously ask how each other's day is going. Uh, I watched a movie. Big news, I know. I don't do it a lot. I watch Rhett and Link in the mornings. When I do my lunch, and that's basically it, dude. Bloomberg, Rhett, and Link. Damn, I do watch them pretty continuously. It's a podcast. I don't think I've ever watched Good Mythical Morning. Like, you got it. An episode. It, they eat so many perky things. Are they still in Smosh? No, they just sold it back to the duo. They sold it back to the guys for way less than they bought it. For. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the worst <laughs> business move ever. I wouldn't. Dude, I, I would like to know the contract of that. But yeah, the freaking uh, what's Smosh names? The freaking buy Ian one. and Anthony. Yeah, uh, whatever one, whatever one that was doing well on his own came back. <laughs> I was on their channel, and it's just like I don't want to say it's sad because it's just not the content that I fell in love with that they used to uh, make 15 years ago. But they're still getting some views, but it's just so different now. Is it not getting Millie's? Nah, is nah, it not? It's, I think it's doing like a couple hundred thou. Okay, smart. Yeah, they probably make a little bit here and there. But I watched movie of acclaimed director, uh, Coppola, the man who made The Godfather. His first name, everybody knows, is this Francis Ford Coppola. He made The Godfather. He made Dracula, and he also made Megalopolis. You ever heard of Megalopolis? No. You never ha got targeted an ad on YouTube about a movie with Adam Driver. Or actually, they have billboards up around L.A. Adam Driver, Aubrey Plaza, Shia LaBeouf, and some lady I don't know. Her name's actually... Uh, her name. Everybody knows it. It's a thing. They really didn't shout her out, did they? Damn, uh, maybe Matt? she just... She's literally, <laughs> I'm looking on Google and she's like the fifth image that pops up under cast and she's definitely like the second main character. Any Huskies, Megalopolis, you know the Godfather, acclaimed, you know Coppola off top? You're a movie man. Nah. You don't know, are you not that much of a movie man? I don't watch movies yeah. ever. <laughs> whoa, dude, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> what? Was, what was that? What was what? The video audience, your camera just shot your crop. Oh, oh yeah. No, I was putting my laptop down because I'm trying to find my charger. Ah, uh, I, I can't find it. So, yeah, I can talk about let's, it. Make we'll a lot see how this goes. Uh, yeah, let's hear it. Is it better than Transformers One? I haven't seen Transformers One. It's a, uh, it's up there with Uncut Gems. That's my, my only other. Oh. And House of Gucci would probably be below my Uncut Gems. Just flawless filmmaking. <laughs> uncut Gems, House of Gucci, which also, which also had Adam Driver. <laughs> not a not a thing, all right? And if you love House of Gucci, you'll love Joker <laughs> fully ado. I haven't seen Joker fully deuce yet, but I did see Megalopolis on my computer, on a laptop with 
ads popping up about uh, Chinese slots every now and then. That's um, a good way to watch a film to consume I'm some sure, art. I'm sure the the director of Godfather would would really only envision me watching his passion project of Megalopolis on a uh, over a blanket in a dark room. I'm sure, yeah, I'm sure he was thrilled. Just like I watched Dune 2 on my iPod Touch. <laughs> Dune 2. <laughs> on the bus. <laughs> iPod Touch. Uh, I haven't seen it. Megalopolis, everybody hated it online. Ron Tomatoes crashed on it. Uh, IMDb crashed on it, 5 out of 10. Metacritic crashed on it. Everybody hated it. Good movie. And they're all wrong. Hot like, take, dude. George's hot they... take. Did they read your review of Uncut Gems? Like, <laughs> did they even <laughs> see the director's cut? Uncut Gems. Films.net. <laughs> Uncut Gems. I don't know if I saw commercials for it, but I saw Megalopolis YouTube ad. Okay, so first of all, this man Coppola, I think he he funded the marketing itself, and I'm not sure if the marketing was the number that I saw, um, but it was 120 million dollars that I'm pretty sure came out of his pocket. Oh, nice. He just had that laying around. You know, just classic Coppola things. Yeah. Uh, it was, everybody hated it. It was basically like an indie, college indie film if it had $120 million and a pretty good director. Two-hour runtime, pretty freaking long. Definitely wasn't stoked about that. I did have to take a break in between at the hour mark. Just, that bad, huh? Not that bad, but like, it was like 2 a.m. It was good, and I needed a break. You know, um, Steven Spielberg directed Jaws when he was 26. Right. It's it's too late. Give up. <laughs> is what I'm trying to say. Gary, give yeah. Gary on the phone, dude. No, it's the first the first blockbuster, summer blockbuster in history. 19. When was just Jaws came out? Because that. If oh, let me guess. Let me guess. Let me guess. 76. 75. 75? Fuck, close. It means you're born in 60, whatever, you know? 50, whatever. Yeah. Dude, so he's fucking old. He is pretty old. Yeah. He's just like... Hey, look at this guy. Look at... Dude, his Wikipedia cover picture, 2023, he's looking like a beast, dude. Probably works out. I mean, not like a beast, but he's looking good for it. I mean, 77 is not super old, but he just looks like like an author looks like a billionaire to me yeah he could probably fund his own movie that everybody hates for 120 million dollars crazy if you're just like the guy you're just like synonymous with directing <laughs> contemporary or you're like you're like oh okay spielberg like, that's <laughs> yeah. me you know the, like, okay einstein the movie's einstein precisely yeah that's everybody's funny. wrong about megalopolis all right dude it was freaking sick uh, I also, this is kind of a aside, but I, I was streaming on Ricker and Bond and also on YouTube, my YouTube, and I just, you know, reading things about stocks while listening to rave music. I called it music and money, but it could also have been called raves and revenue. Pretty sick. Streaming's awesome. Love it. R rest in peace to freaking, uh, what was Vine's post? Brother Periscope. Rest in peace to Periscope. Musk once again ruining America. You know what I mean. He Rest also in peace to uh, chopsticks. Jack TV. What was that called? Alex TV. Oh yeah, Justin TV. Before oh, Justin TV. I oh. I watched the guy on Justin TV who did like he did like pranks and stuff, and then they sold that sold that bad boy to Twitch. I just want to uh, shout out that we were the original real life streamers. Doing it in 2018. Yeah, remember? We used to take our phones to the dude, gym. There were so many more IRL streamers before no, that. No, fuck them. We were first. <laughs> dude, like, like, Twitch didn't, like Twitch didn't exist before. <laughs> no, it didn't. We were pioneers. In 2018? <laughs> yeah, bro. That was a different time. TikTok didn't exist in 2018. That That is true, but I mean, Justin.TV cats were doing IRL streamers, but... It, it was an streaming. entirely new world. Oh my God, so much fun. Streaming was awesome. It's. Um, I'm gonna for sure read stuff on the laptop at mid. Uh, I'm thinking about 10 p.m. to midnight, uh, and just listen to freaking high BPM music and read about stocks that are close to their 52-week high.
It's pretty sick. Shit. And I was doing a notion, which is why I, after I said sick, I went on this tangent of a table of sick and trash. Well, I'm going through stocks. I either call it trash or I say that's a sick stock. It's kind of like the double chocolate chunk cookie guys. Oh, I <laughs> I saw a video of their stream and someone was just spamming the N word over and over again <laughs> and everyone started doing it and the fucking dad was trying so hard not to laugh. That's the, <laughs> that's the bit. The fall of society is them doing. Do, do they stream? Do they do IRL stuff? Uh, they were doing some some weird ass shit. I watching him kind of creeps me out because the eyes are so blue and it's just like right. he's they're like scared. so they're... beautiful, but he's just like a man. They're scary so... characters for real. It's, it's okay. Let's get to the news. We're losing viewership. <laughs> you mean people don't like ten minutes of us shooting the s, dude? No, they want to hear Anyways, about the news. Breaker and Bond streaming once again. I'll probably go back to Twitch, YouTube. The homies go on, but I'll go back to Twitch. And, uh, you know, you can hop on there, anybody, and uh, show your show your drunk. It's all good, you know. <laughs> you're going you're gonna to want to go to Rick and Bond YouTube to see that reaction of Bond. It's freaking sick. Definitely in the awesome. column. Robin Hood. Everybody What's going on with Robin Hood? Under the age of 32 loved it. Everybody who was in just out of college in 2018 was buying stuff that they liked having no idea how to do stuff and you know after the years go by these investors a lot of people trade and Robinhood wants all their users to be traders too they grow up as they said as a, a Vlad said on a keynote on October 16th 2024 as they unleashed something revolutionary Bond Jen Robinhood did Something never before seen in the history of finance and financial technology. Robinhood unveiled a desktop brokerage. Hold for applause. Oh, fuck, really? Hold for applause. A desktop brokerage, everybody. Damn. Clap it up. Clap it up for Vlad and the team doing something never before seen. This is what we got a fucking keynote together for. <laughs> this is what we spent $200,000 on production for. A desktop brokerage. You can have up to seven monitors. So Robinhood, the, the, the real thing that they were probably unveiling was they now offer futures and index options for their lovely degenerate traders. So You they... thought gambling was fun before. <laughs> As, as you thought, one day expiration on options on the app on your mobile phone was fun. Just wait till you get into index funds. Um, pretty cool. They are kind of blowing up the spot for people on futures, but you can now trade futures on Robinhood app soon. I don't think it's live right now, but you can freaking just tap on your freaking leverage margin futures as a little degenerate and uh, you can either share or choose not to share your finances with your loved ones. I thought that was also funny. So Robin, so I can get my bots involved to do my trading for me. I don't know if you can plug an API to Robin Hood stuff. Oh, they better um, be able to. Yeah. It's actually an interesting a bot just thing. scraping up loose change from the stock market. Losers do. They don't know how to do it. Robinhood adds futures and index options trading to its app, also debuting a desktop platform called Robinhood Legend for quote-unquote advanced users. Featuring features for S&P 500, oil, and Bitcoin at first. Per contract, it's either $0.50 cents or $0.75, cents, depending on gold versus normal users. And uh, you can freaking do sick charts on a desktop. No one's ever seen it before. Hood stock up 110% year to date, which is kind of funny, but uh, it's it's not back at the IPO price just yet. Your thoughts, Bonjen? Uh, not the biggest fan of Robin Hood, but here's the thing. I wrote a piece on this, put it on LinkedIn. It basically just 
first of all doing like the numbers of it so i can hack the algorithm but uh robin hood as an app and as a product did get a whole lot of young cats into investing now whether those young cats grew up six seven years eight years later to be a prudent long-term investor of solid 13 to 20 percent gains every year who knows who's to say probably not but robin hood got a lot of people into investing back in the day easy to buy uber because people took ubers easy to buy a train stock because you're watching stocks in tucson and easy to buy solar city because it was cheaper than tesla at the time and then it disbanded and went into tesla your thoughts i half maybe a quarter agree with you okay i i think that okay i think that robin hood is a beautiful piece of software it's simplicity did a lot for the field of investing however i do think that the product is predatory on especially young men that might have um might sh might seek out like dopamine hits like super fast because i believe like the app rewards dopamine when you make a trade there's fucking confetti you know it's like a it's like a casino yeah and i think it's doing the same thing that meta is doing with um like dopamine and young people and like their inability to like understand that they're like being addicted to something but i think it's a degree worse because you're like playing with real money yeah you know um but yeah that's the like like yeah it, it is a it is a bridge to like actual investing but i feel like more people use robin hood for like gambling purposes like fucking trading options and shit not like learning about finance precisely this is this is why i said who's to say that yeah they call their freaking users traders uh yeah they're the the new things that they unveiled is for trading um freaking monitors but i just i find it and i, I was trying to talk it out with chat gbt you know my girl sora over there uh it gave me something that was very 10th grade essay-ish but i found it i was trying to and i'm still thinking about it but a finance company that debuts a desktop brokerage in 2024 after like it exists for a long time is pretty freaking funny of like companies just inventing more stuff and kind of like the airbnb and stuff and somewhat uber creating taxis etc cetera, etc cetera, making it somewhat easier or more efficient to do something but it i wonder what took them so long like were they trying to just be mobile first yeah so that's that's that was also another part of it where you have this product where it is super mobile first and it was made in 2011 ipo'd in 2020 now um 2021 and you got a bunch of those new probably young people trading and then kind of addicted to doing short-term finance stuff and then as they grow up you made a, a new product for them as they advanced in in their degeneracy most likely but i i find that very interesting too of a product literally for a long long time only staying on mobile like they had yeah. desktop stuff and but the desktop's not fun to use and maybe that's that was the thing where like they really just neglected it but a company that built the product as its users advanced in whatever field it was in um i thought it was also a, an interesting concept you kind of see it with like instagram it used to be a photo thing there's also something i posted um that from uh trade vc i think their name is on instagram um but a new app got funded and it's just like a photo album app i haven't checked it out yet but it's supposed to be like gen z photo albums and that again like cyclical rebuilding of things that people use um i'll have to check it out but it looks kind of cooler than instagram and kind of goes back to just like sharing photos i wonder if they bought another 
trading platform and just slap their logo on it or if they just like actually built this i kind of feel like they built it um also i mean their stock looks like it's pretty good a lot lower than the ipo but like this year it's been doing well yeah um uh what are their a lot earnings of financials like have kind of gone that way it is kind of just following the financial sector but i mean i bet I, we'll see it in their reporting if they make more money this way Oh, yeah. Okay, Robin Hood. I see you, dude. I see you. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see where this goes. you always wait two to four years after an ipl In other news that kind of has to do with this low key, or do you have something else? apple buys them I don't think so. I don't think Apple wants to deal with that. eventually meta I think they would, I think they would more likely buy, if they were to buy a brokerage, which I don't think they would, they would buy someone else. Go on. Were you about to talk about Um, TikTok? no, I'm about to talk about Facebook laying off another 10,000 people today Okay. or yesterday. Not Facebook, Meta. Meta Yeah. laid off 10,000 people. Um, wonder why um, the stock is healthy. So my guess more than anything is that Zuck, Zuck just knows he's he's learning how to cut costs It's and called... reduce re and increase revenue. instead Like of instead of making more money you reduce you, you uh, reduce your margins or increase your margins uh by cutting stuff yeah, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. He is making more money, and he's still cutting costs, which makes investors erect. <laughs> Um, five people plus a lot of revenue Netflix is doing the same thing. Uh, Netflix had some layoffs this year, or maybe it was last year, and they raised their prices, and people still signed up, and their stock went crazy. Google Um, consolidating their Gemini team with, um, sorry, I have to look it up, uh, with their DeepMind team. So they're moving their, their Gemini team, which is their AI search engine, um, to their DeepMind, which is, uh, I think, just large language model. I'm not positive. Oh, I thought they were on the same team, but Uh, yeah. Google is a fucking mess, dude. Google's a fucking Jesus Christ. Google just seems so unorganized. It's 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 almost a miracle how they get anything done. That is funny Like, you say that because uh, there was also, you know, rumblings of ChatGPT taking away a lot of search online. yeah, so they got to figure that out because For search sure. is if search is fucked, then. There's going to be no more ping pong tables in the office. <laughs> no more twenty dollar vouchers, which is what Meta used for his excuse to lay off people. Yeah, the fuck was that about? Uh, they, they always, when it's cutting time, they always say like, "Oh, you guys are being poopy," and they just use the excuse to lay off people. Um, Wouldn't it just be easier to say we're cutting costs? This was random. Eh. I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe layoffs are like, oh no, they're trying to do something. Bad, bad headline, bad PR. In that same vein, Google being a mess uh, and almost being taken over by search by basically Microsoft, which is also hilarious. The boys who made Bing are uh, forty nine percent booting you in your in your main oops, ad, but ad and search, which is getting a new executive. Prab uh, Prabat. Oh boy, <laughs> Prabhakar Raghavan, uh, who was the search and ads division leader in Google, was stepping down to become the Google's chief technologist, uh, where he will focus on tech and innovation. And replacing Mr. Raghavan is Nick Fox. Everybody knows Nick, everybody likes his last name. Leading Google's knowledge and information division, which includes search ads and commerce products. Uh, he's been with 2003. Raghavan, who's now the CTO, led the development of AI-driven tools. Gmail Smart Reply and Smart Compose. Do you ever use Gmail Smart Reply stuff? Probably. Sometimes it's nice. It'll say like, hey, do you want to meet up for... And it says, instead of coffee, slapping that ass. Right. 
<laughs> that was, was Ragavan, dude. You know Ragavan, Gmail, dude. I didn't do Raga, it. Ragavan's good, dude. When Ragavan's good, Ragavan's good. Um, AI features on maps and shopping. I'm not really sure how AI is on maps. Apparently, immersive view and virtual try on. You ever try on tried on something? I forget. Did you just say you don't know how AI is on maps? <laughs> yeah. What does AI do on maps? It probably assists with your route. Ah. Well, this says immersive view, so, you know. I don't know. I don't know. On what the that, production team, that dude. Um, back on Gemini versus Google DeepMind, Gemini app team, which focuses on Google's AI products, will now join DeepMind to try to go faster with AI. Uh, because, you know, before, why have two AI teams be together? It doesn't make sense. Obviously, you're supposed to freaking silo them. Um, I was about to say Jim and I shit the bed, but I will say that when I make a search, especially a question, and I see that Jim and I blurb on, Google? on top of all the links, I am quite pleased that yeah. I don't have to click onto any links. It's better. It's yeah. Better. Um, I, I do get my answer pretty quicker than before. It is crazy once something new comes out and you're like, oh my God, I used to have to like sift through articles. I was just spinning yeah, the article the and I had to read. What's Google going to do? How are they going to make money from this? Oh, you know. The fuck? <laughs> um, How are they going to track me <laughs> <laughs> if I just don't click any websites? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I'll think about it in the future you're but... the ceo figure it out uh go in <laughs> it gave me like two hours create that shareholder value it. huh create that shareholder value just fire everybody uh uh i don't know uh google ads still a thing kind of small businesses still have to do things on search uh youtube still kicking ass YouTube um, kicks ass. It YouTube does. is the biggest streaming service. Netflix in the world, the biggest. Actually, it's YouTube. For just it's like YouTube. anything, for anything, and even on TV, like people watch YouTube more on TV than Netflix, probably because they might like put on a really long video that just plays music, but like analysts still count that. So like YouTube still kicking ass. It's generating billions of dollars a year for Google. Um, there's literally no competition with it except, I mean, uh, TikTok and Instagram, but like YouTube That's is still good. the quality platform. Like YouTube is the HBO of fucking user generated content platforms. It, 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 it brings stuff. Um, I'm getting live just in my ear now, some Google revenue, uh, 58% of alphabet revenue is Google search. Um, also, 30 YouTube is ad. like YouTube. Come again. It's 30% like YouTube ads. It says encompassing revenue from its search engine and YouTube ads, excluding YouTube subscriptions. So probably ads and search and ads, including YouTube ads, 58% of their business. In 2023, 163 billion. YouTube ads, 12%. Google Network, which is Google ads on third party websites, around 12%. Google Cloud, around 11%. Uh, which I can see like people like, oh, oh that's a good point. Google but, Cloud, I forgot about Google that. Cloud, but you, you're, you're in that email and you're like, oh, I need space. I'm sure that gets some money around 11% of their money. Um, Hardware. Oh, well, they're referring to um, like if you have a website and you want to have cloud servers, they have um, a service kind of like um, or exactly like Amazon Web Services. Got you. Google and Google. also Google. Microsoft does too. But um, I'm surprised that doesn't give them more money because that's like Amazon's main source of income is cloud computing. $32 billion, do you know the, uh, the billions that's coming from Amazon? Only 32 bill. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. If uh, Let's see how much AWS brings in. So maybe they could fucking, I don't know. 
Like I'm giving them fucking advice as a bot. AWS is almost 89 billion. Google Cloud's 32 percent or 32 billion. AWS is kicking ass. Everything is built on AWS. Um, and then percentage of revenue for Amazon coming from AWS coming in around 16%. So these cloud services, not the biggest chunks of revenue for the big boys. What is the main source of revenue for Amazon? Well, everybody knows that the main revenue source for Amazon, I'm not typing this in in chat GPT. Um, says online stores, third-party seller fees, and Amazon Prime. From, Amazon um, is fucking kicking ass, dude. I want to see from their financial reports if it gives me any more percentages. Uh, but the main revenue source for Amazon says it's coming from its e-commerce business. About 40% is coming from online stores, direct sales, third-party sellers, which is commissions, fulfillment fees, and shipping fees. 23%. AWS is their third biggest revenue source at 16%. Subscription services, Amazon Prime, etc., 7%. Ads, 8 Physical stores, like Whole Foods, 4%. Interesting. Uh, interesting. I thought their online store lost money. Maybe I kind it's of thought that profitable. AWS was their main, their main joint. Maybe their online stores might have been seen, because I don't know what ads meant, but well, that was in my head, but I just thought AWS was the main money goat. Unless ChatGPT. But all these facts. Can you say that again? I think you got cut out. Fuck me. Just say it again. Unless ChatGPT is wrong. Great. Now, about these say, facts. That, say that like you're a divorced dad. I can't. I can't. <laughs> you choked under pressure. Uh, I can't. It's always fun when the hour. How much actual time is it? It's the uh, thirty minute mark. When when the forty minute mark hits and uh, we come back from a ten minute break, unbeknownst to everybody else. Um, yeah, I'm I have big news. We have to pause for one second. Huge sure. news. Yeah, yeah, huge news. The guy who Just attacked gotta... Gaza is dead. No, no Israel, Gaza. Nah. Bigger, bigger news. What? Just got a call from our dear friend Miles. He invited me to sit courtside at a Clippers game. Oh, tonight. let's go, Boats. Boat boys let's all day, all night. Bo I, I, I didn't ask questions, didn't ask how <laughs> you, I got the tickets. When you asked me, <laughs> no, dude, sometimes, bro, he was at the soccer game I was at. He, he had freaking box, box seats. Freaking, remember when he just knows people? He does. He's, he's, a, he's a closer. What can you say? Yeah. One time, John Damon, whatever his name, and the shark called me a closer because I had a pen in my ear when I met him one time. Oh, at a Black Wealth conference. Oh, right. Right. You were the VIP. You were the guest speaker. <laughs> oh, yes. That's a <laughs> token what? Um, I was going to bring up an air horn effect for, uh, for the boat side. That's not what I want. I want a DJ air horn. Let's go boats, dude. Go boats. <laughs> dude. Can't wait to go support my boats in person. Have I might I... I might have to make that merge because it's I that there's no way that's not a hot potato ticket sell of having a bunch of sweatshirts. <laughs> Let's go boats. Let's go boats, dude. Are you a boat boy? I'm a boat boy for life, baby. I'm I'm a San Diego Clipper fan. Which means I'm an LA Clipper aficionado. Nice. Clipper. So you just hate yeah. the Dodgers. That's what you're saying. I hate the Dodgers. There's like I really don't fall into the fandom of things. I like repping things for the sake of repping and I enjoy sports. But I hate when people get all a little sporty, but I dislike the Dodgers. Why do people like the Dodgers so much? Imagine liking the Dodgers, right? I mean, like I understand like a little yeah. bit, yeah, but okay. they go away. They go way harder than Laker fans. They go way harder than any sports fans I've ever seen um, in LA. There's a lot of there's a lot of foos, man. There's a lot of freaking Mexicanos that like the Dodgers, the Doyers. They 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 literally be bleed blue. <laughs> they love you know wearing shorts, long socks, 
and repping the doors, dude. My coworkers be getting into fights over this shit. Yeah. I'm just like, bruh, like, I, I, it's just a game, guys. <laughs> yeah. That is an interesting thought of why uh, people go harder for the doyers. Yeah, like, you don't see people getting into fights outside of basketball games. Like, let's put it that way. That's that's with a lot of baseball. A lot of base. Maybe it's because like cheaper tickets. Everywhere. Maybe, but it's like it's like <sighs> baseball. Baseball gets into fights. Is it because the sport is so much slower, so people have more time to talk shit to each other because they're not watching? Alcohol. But yeah, that too. Maybe more chirping, more uh, yeah. like you. There, there is a lot of uh, it happens in hockey, but there is a lot of uh, you know banter that goes on in baseball. Yeah, it's like fuck Dodgers me. suck, dude. Hey, okay, okay, dude, Mister San Diego over here. Oh, the Padres, bro. Oh, so cool, dude. Their coach. Their coach, who used to be a Padre, uh, the one of the the big players on the Padres is called Manny Machado. His name, and he just yeah. he threw a ball towards the daughter dugout just to get the ball out of the way. Completely not malicious. And this joker of a of a manager they have over there at L.A. Dude, he riled up the boys, saying, "Oh, dude, Machado is trying to hit us, bro. You got to rile up the boys." He riled up the boys, and then they won the series, and they were like, yeah, dude, I was just lying. I, I knew that would rile up the boys. Oh, sometimes you got to rile up the boys. <laughs> and you know what? You hating the Dodgers is making me like them more. <laughs> fuck the Padres. <laughs> oh, fuck you, dude. <laughs> yeah, dude, why don't you go put on your flip-flops <laughs> and go somewhere else? I wear jeans on the beach, all right? <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking disgusting. No, it's not, dude. I'm like, the, I wear jeans. I, I walk on the beach. It's not like I'm laying on the beach. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just imagining like you're, the bottom of your pants getting wet. And no, dude, I'm not it. frolicking. Like, I'm not <laughs> beach frolicking. I'm like walking on the coast like a normal human being. Oh, I Lord. remember I, when I was taking the train back from LA and I was at one of the like San Diego stops. There's a, <laughs> there was a guy in flip flops and a San Diego Padre shirt on. And I was like, hell yeah, brother, we're back. Dude. <laughs> yeah. The Padres, bro. <laughs> the Padres. Let's go posh, dude. Fuck the Padres. Uh, fuck San Diego. They, uh, no, dude, that's, that's ridiculous. Of you. Even though it's beautiful there, but fuck San Diego. Dude, the Dodgers are also like just giving the Mets. They're only up two to one, but they're just, giving the Mets a nice little rear spanking as well. And I like the Mets too. Anyways, that's the sports corner. And to delve more into the sports corner, the LA Boats are playing the Sacramento Kings for the fifth game of the season. Today at 7.30 p.m. You better make your way down there. <laughs> fifth game of the preseason. Is yeah, I still got to go to my... Season yet? No, I think it starts on the 25th. Oh, really? So you... Warriors have been killing it in this preseason. Their championship season is now, dude. No, nah, this is our this is our <laughs> year. This is the boats here. Classic Ricker and Bond. This is the boats here. <laughs> I feel it. Uh, uh, let's go. <laughs> let's go, boats. Dude. So funny. Just being in Inglewood and being the Clippers is just a funny thing, dude. Should I buy a two hundred dollar jersey? Uh, and they should buy a two hundred dollar Inglewood house, dude. Fuck. Inglewood House, oh god, yeah, dude. Property is not yeah. cheap in Inglewood anymore. Not anymore. <laughs> the Those are days good. are over. A little late. When it's late prime time. I mean, prime time's like fifty years ago, but two thousand price is not bad. Probably before like two thousand eleven, you were probably good. All right, all right. I'll go back in time. Um, yeah. you were saying ChatGPT might have been lying about AWS, and I was like, I can't wait. So, uh, you know, it'll probably be not too long, but hopefully it's not a Zoom feature. Maybe I can plug in API with ChatGPT, but uh, an AI producer that can fact check and give you the numbers live in here. An AI producer? Yeah. So, like, you're for, for like pods and stuff, and it can be like, oh, uh, yeah. What is, what is the revenue, J Jimmy? Yeah. I see. Will you fund I me $400 million? See. That's an interesting um, idea there. Pretty nice use case. You just be like, hey, AI, Jamie, look this up. It just yeah, looks Jamie. it up. Mm. Easy. Pretty interesting. Already a thing now, but, you know, whip it up. Whip it up. 
that seems like something they should like bake into Riverside or something. Yeah, and that's what I was saying. Like, oh, it's gonna have to be a Zoom product, but that's what I was hoping for some API integration. I've never used Riverside, but I will say that look how far we've come with what you can do with the browser. Now you can just have a full on podcast. Their microphone yeah. might only be in the left ear when it's obviously stereo, and that's pretty lame. But have you considered that maybe it was a hardware issue on your end? Of course, it was. I only <laughs> had one out from the, the left speaker, which is, I think, is how it's supposed to only be the left. But this is stereo. Is so it? get it together. Um, whatever happened to, how much did anchor sell for to spotify just whatever they did they should have just kept going the spotify oh. no way that was a lucky break bro. <laughs> it was. How, are they, how are they gonna make any money for that shit uh they they spotify paid uh 340 million to buy gimlet and anchor Ooh, ooh! imagine they just got a third of that Oh yeah, daddy. <laughs> Ooh, daddy likey those numbers. Uh, Spotify doubled down on podcasts in 2019. <laughs> Way to go, Joe. Um, yeah, they uh, they bought it. They bought it. Spotify paid around 200 million dollars for Gimlet, and would which would mean Anchor fetched 140 million dollars from Spotify. Now. Like keep that in mind. That was what twenty nineteen. Mm-hmm. Now there are several podcasters doing hundred million dollar deals. Spotify so maybe had... they did make the right choice to sell or Spotify. Spotify to buy these platforms because, like, if people if if podcasters are doing like these kinds of deals, like fucking the caller daddy girl, and I know fucking Will Arnett did like a pretty lucrative podcast deal. Imagine how much money Spotify must be getting, maybe, perhaps, right? Because these are these are Spotify exclusive deals, right? Unknown, but sure, I get, I get. Or maybe they're just spending fucking um, Wall Street money to acquire yeah. this this exclusive content. Well, I was gonna say Spotify is at its almost all time high. Their all time high is a perky three eighty seven, and they almost touched that last month at. 389 so they are they're at their all-time highs right now i mean and apparently they have more users on iphones than apple music does which I, and that goes back to the sense which makes sense of the sentiment of being like spotify over apple music we talked about it but just like megalopolis they're wrong but spotify is like technically technologically an inferior product because it has lower quality audio and it ha- doesn't support stuff like spatial audio interface sucks screw all the spatial stuff there spotify looks worse than apple music you think so i kind of like spotify's i like spotify's ui wrong i i just wish they had if they had spatial audio and all that good stuff i still wouldn't switch because i have a home pod but <laughs> It's that fucking moat, dude. But if that weren't the case, like if I had something else, I'd probably use Spotify. I use Spotify for podcasts. That's my main go-to. I mean, I did use Spotify for podcasts. Shout out to uh, Robin Hood Snacks back in the day, which is now known as the best one yet. T-Boy. Jack. Really? Jack, yeah. They're on their own somewhere else. You didn't know that? Didn't. No, I didn't. Two out of mouth. Or they left to go do their own. I think there was something they might be serious now. Yeah, funny. But uh, they always do that or some lame ass shit like that. They're, Box they're, media. They, they they had the classic Robin Hood snacks voices. They had a solid um format for a nice young budding financial interested kid. Some podcasts are just good. You're listening to one of them, Rick Rambaugh. Next up, we got The Weeknd. What's he up to? Just kidding. Not, not dropping, dude. How come <laughs> Tyler, the creator, can announce an album saying it's going to drop in 10 days and not be lying, but The Weeknd has to fucking edge us for fucking months? Yeah. I'm telling you, bro. He's just waiting for this Diddy list to come out, dude. Sure. Um, speaking of acquiring things, Uber is 
sending out feelers to acquire Expedia. Expedia. In, That's uh, interesting. In um, hopes to to do a super app type of deal, as they say. Is that... I don't know if this is like a conflict of interest or anything, but the current CEO is the ex CEO of Expedia. Dara? Yeah. Is he? Mm hmm. Uh, I mean, so like he knows, legal. he knows that company inside and out. So he's, I would be surprised if he's spearheading this whole thing. Well, he is spearheading the company that is spearheading it. Um, what is Expedia? Travel? Expedia is a travel website. Uh, it has a market cap of around $20 billion. However, discussions right now, Bonjen, are in the preliminary stage, and no formal talks with Expedia have taken place. So it's probably Dara phoning up his Expedia homies and being like, hey, you know that we're all going to crash, right? Or at least you for sure going to crash. If it says it's public, it might be a public company. Is it? So he wants yes. you to be able to book your flights on Uber, presumably. Which is cool, I think. Cool. Um, the thing about Expedia, though, is hmm? that the thing about Expedia, though, is that it has something that Uber doesn't have, which I think pulls it back. Is like if you're like looking for flights, you go on Google, and then it shows you like the flights on Google. Like you don't go to Expedia, whereas for Uber, that's not the case. You just open the Uber app and go straight to the product. Well, instead of Google being that, it'd be Uber. Yeah. So, well, like, hard, hard, hard habit to fix for people using Google, but. Will Expedia what? prices not show up on Google anymore? Perhaps, 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 perhaps. But I mean, if you're doing the. I mean, it's a hard habit, for sure, a hard habit to break. To I mean, Google is just getting hit, dog. <laughs> Google is getting hit jab by jab. Um, but Expedia is a public company. It's trading at 158 right now, which is close to what the price was in 2017. But it's not the all-time high of 2022 at 217 was all-time high. Um, it's like getting priced by WWE getting bought by TKO. But um, acquiring Expedia could accelerate Uber's expansion into the travel space, aligning with what Dara wants to be an everyday app, just like people want the super app like mr musk wanted x to be a super app um train ticket sales launched in the uk for uber in 2022 uh going beyond ride hailing and food delivery um some analyst insights from mr robert of gordon haskett noted that uh, if a full acquisition doesn't happen, Uber could benefit from a potential partnership with Expedia through a white label solution to integrate travel bookings into its platform, which still, maybe if that's, I don't know, financially, if that's better for Uber in the long term, but that seems like a win for Uber. Um, yeah, I just wish they would get back into self-driving cars. You do. I do. I really do. I feel like it's going to bite them in the long term. But that's a very cash intensive business. It's, I mean, them not doing, are they completely over it right now? They abandoned it, their self-driving car efforts in an attempt to reach profitability well, a few years ago. And I think they did reach profitability. Prices. But like, you know, with this fucking new... Tesla robo taxi coming out, which we didn't even talk about, which we don't even have time to. Um, you don't have time. Um, and fucking Waymo's on the road and yeah. shit. Like, I, I, I do data. think like in Perhaps. 15. Yeah, they do have a lot of data, but like, I mean, I guess they do have user data, but I feel like the real like data that like integrate, these companies need. Integrate huh? into Tesla vehicles of doing uber like an airplay situation a car play i'm sure that might not be in the interest of tesla etc but there's ways to get in yeah uber is like if you're gonna you're gonna use a tesla app instead of an uber app to get a taxi um probably if it's cheaper hmm. I, same thing with what tesla did with evs driving a bunch of EV prices down, 
it's going to be the same thing with what they're doing here. Everybody's going to be a race to zero, just like Uber versus Lyft. Oh, yeah. Which goes into the Oh, game. yeah, but it's like, I don't know, but it's like the fucking, how, how do I explain this in like business terms? It's a race to zero, but like your margins can still be chunky because you don't have to like pay a person. Sure. And like new if world the, eh? <laughs> if yeah if the if someone else owns the vehicle like the tesla owner owns the vehicle then they're responsible for the maintenance and not tesla yeah and tesla well, that's what gets... if, if uber can slide in and be a part of that ecosystem somehow then they can still win they they have to but they're just so i just feel like they sat on the sidelines for five crucial years of development and they were like they were doing a good job too but i mean they weren't just like their uber cars killed someone but some people got to die to oh my god to uh, for technological advancement dower came in at 2017 came oh. in that dumpster fire and turned it around i mean stock price went up and down but it's up now um are you running out of time i'm running out of time i have to go cleanse my body with soap and then i'm gonna Go to Miles' house, and I'm gonna go watch the boats kill. Who the are King, they playing? The Kings. The Kings. <laughs> Fuck the Kings. They're playing that into it. Uh, into it all day, baby. Inglewood oh, for you life. See Mr. Microsoft's, uh, Mr. Microsoft's vision in there. I get to see him. I get to pat his bald head because I'm if, sitting courtside, baby. If you're not loud, it ejects you out of your seat. Really? N no, but it can tell you how loud you are, and if you're loud enough, you get a prize. I heard there's a weed smoke smoking section. Is that Dude. true? Before I embarrass myself, I, I'm pretty. We talked about that a long time ago. It, I think it was a rumor, but that's pretty sick. I'm looking. Is it only right weed now. though, because I would. I, I love the the oldness of a, just a bunch of cigarette smokers. I went to freaking the San Diego Gold Stadium, and they still mm -hmm. have a smoking section. Hilarious. Very I funny. have very bad news. All forms of smoking, including vaping and e-cigarettes, are prohibited in the arena and anywhere on property. That's why you're I, in Microsoft stalking in the ground, Balmer. Holy shit, Steve. Uh, Fuck. All right. Well, whatever. Ron Jen's going to go cheer on the boat, just like we all are. Uh, and uh, we're going to hit this intro. Yes, daddy. <laughs> 